My Lords, I have to tell my noble friend, Lord Forsyth, that I'm not with him on this amendment, and nor is the Government. That has nothing to do with the issue of assisted dying, about which we will each have our own views. It is about the proper process for bringing forward legislation and the roles and responsibilities of Government on the one hand and parliamentarians on the other. Governments are elected. The electorate then expects the Government to bring forward their programme of legislation, which Parliament then decides upon. If alongside that process there is an issue that Government does not choose to legislate on, but which happens to be close to the heart of an individual parliamentarian, that parliamentarian has the privilege of being able to bring forward a private member's bill for Parliament to consider. In each of those two legislative processes, the roles, the rights, the responsibilities, the privileges of government and of individual parliamentarians are separate. It is no more appropriate for government to try to force an MP or a peer to bring forward a particular private member's bill than it is for an MP or a peer to try to force a government to bring forward a government bill. And that, of course, includes a draft bill. Because, as my noble and learned friend Lord Mackay of Clash Fern observed in committee, draft bills are only brought forward by government when there is an intention to legislate. My Lords, government ha the government has no intention of legislating on assisted dying. It is no part of the government's programme. It was no part of the government's election manifesto. Equally, it is no part of the government's agenda to prevent an MP or a peer bringing forward a private member's bill on assisted dying. And the noble Baroness Lady Meacher has done just that because it is something she feels strongly about. It is for her to persuade Parliament and the Government that her bill is a good thing. That is the proper process and surely, my lords, that is how it has to be because if it ever became possible for an MP or a peer to use a Government bill as a vehicle for obliging the government to publish a completely separate bill, even, let me say, on a, a bill on a subject was, which was in tune with the government's thinking, the due process of legislating would thereby be subverted. I ask noble lords opposite how they would react if, under a Labour administration, an MP or a peer proposed to use a health bill as a vehicle to oblige the government to publish draft legislation, the purpose of which was to place all NHS hospitals into private ownership. Or one might find uh, an MP trying to use a criminal justice bill as a vehicle to oblige the government to publish legislation to bring back capital punishment. My noble friend might say, well, in that circumstance, it would be for Parliament to, to decide whether or not to accept such an amendment. But that is not the point. The point is that if one House of Parliament were to approve such an amendment and the other House were to follow suit, Parliament would thereby be usurping the role of the democratically elected government. The noble Lord, Lord Howarth of Newport, was 100% right, as was my noble friend, Lord Cormac. It is for the government to say what its legislative programme should be, not Parliament. My Lords, as the, as the late noble and learned Lord, Lord Simon of Glaisdale might once have said, this amendment is constitutionally offensive and it should be rejected on those grounds. Yeah. Yeah. The Minister sits down. May I just ask whether the Minister believes that limiting a debate on a crucial human rights issue to Fridays when, as the Minister knows, certainly in the House of Commons very few MPs are around, and actually in the House of Lords too, many, many peers are not available. Does the Minister feel that that's an appropriate way to consider a matter of very great importance? My Lords, we gave a full day's debate to the noble Baroness's bill. That is surely not ungenerous. <laughs>